Hi, and welcome to the Spooky Isles. My name's David Saunderson, and we're back. It's uh, 2022. We've not done a few, uh, any videos for the last couple of months, but uh, we've got a brand new year. It's January. Uh, we're actually filming this on Burns Night. So, uh, funnily enough, though, we're uh, talking about a subject that's very, very far away uh, from Scotland, but it's still a, a Celtic nation. We're talking about Cornwall, and we're talking to it uh, with Matthew Banks. Uh, how are you, Matthew? I'm fine, thank you, David. How are you? Good. We were uh, talking about uh, this uh, a while back, and I thought it would be a, a really good uh, conversation to have. Uh, I went to Cornwall a couple of years ago, and I spent some time in Bodmin Moor. And one of the stories that I was really, really uh, intrigued about was uh, the murder of Charlotte Diamond. Now, there's a, a number of parano paranormal aspects to that, but here at the Spooky Isles, we're just as interested in the true crime aspects of uh, of Britain and Ireland. And, and that's why I'm talking to Matthew Banks. Matthew, you've done a quite a lot of uh, research into this case over the years. Can you maybe give us a little bit of a, a background and then we can maybe go into some of the finer details of the murder of Charlotte Diamond and uh, in Bodmin? And I think it's pronounced Ruftor. I'm probably pronouncing it incorrectly. No, Rautor. Rautor, okay, there and, you go. And Brown Willie. Um, basically, on Sunday, April the 14th, 1844, Charlotte Diamond with her boyfriend, Matthew Weeks, um, went out for a walk and they went up onto the moor and she told him that she'd got a new job because she'd been let go by uh, Mrs. Peter, who who was her former employer, and told him to go back to the farm, um, which, which he did. And Charlotte Diamond was, wasn't was seen alive again, allegedly. Um, but after se he got back about 9.30 that Sunday night, which is being recorded in all the court records and what have you. And um, the following day, everyone was going, where's Charlotte, where's Charlotte? What have you done with Charlotte? Um, and what have you. And this went, this intense uh, bullying really went on for seven days until finally he, j he just walked out. Um, and he went up to Plymouth to see his sister. But after he walked out, um, Mrs. Peter decided to send people out to look for Charlotte and they found her body in um, partly in the stream, partly not in the stream, um, with her throat slit. And then um, basically every it was all was Matthew was the last person to see her alive. He's the killer. Um, they held an inquest um, where everybody all his work colleagues, his employers, everybody said, you know, he was guilty. The one person that wasn't interviewed at the inquest was a chap called Thomas Prout. Um, and he allegedly arranged to meet Charlotte that Sunday night at, at the church. But when it came to trial, he said she didn't turn up. So um, they had this inquest and... In the Royal Cornwall Gazette of the 26th of April, 1844, in the first edition, it clearly states that um, Matthew Weeks is guilty of murder, which was put onto her death certificate. So, um, it, obviously, he was brought back and put into Bob and Gail, or jail, however you pronounce it. Sure. And um, his guilt from that very first newspaper, from the... Um, inquest and newspaper article was set in stone even if they had found some loophole to say that he was innocent he wouldn't have been innocent um and then there was other um really puzzling aspects to the case like um the doctor uh thomas got back on this on the stand towards the end of the trial and it really baffled me as to why he would do that and then I came across, excuse me, leaning forward, uh, a case of um, a man called John Cardew who committed suicide on the 7th of July, 1844, um, by slitting his own throat. Now, in her book, um, the Charlotte uh, uh, Pat Munn's theory is that she could have killed herself. Um, but everyone, people have come out and said, no, that's just a load of baloney. But there are cases of people who have slit their own throat. And this case in particular, because um, that happens in Hale, yeah. 
Yeah, and which uh, where you are, yes. Which yeah. is where I am. Um, received just as much press as the initial inquest into into Charlotte Diamond. So there is no way that people didn't know about this, whether it is Mrs. Peter, his employer, um, the local gentry. Um, it, it was well established. So Matthew Weeks had no no place to go. And we really do have to take into account that he was a cripple. He was uh, five foot four. Okay, so when you uh, say he was, so when you were saying he was a cripple, what would we call that now? Um, what would, what he, was wrong with him? He had a gammy leg and walked with a limp. Okay, all right. So, so he was, um, yep. and also that it was reported in the press that whilst he was in jail waiting to be executed, he he kept having nosebleeds and fainting, and they had to keep him alive which implies all sorts but the most important thing is and what i have to take into account is that uh, a chappy a local gentry called uh, richard pethick was the last person to see charlotte diamond alive which was around about seven o'clock that sunday night talking to a man who at first he said he didn't know and he didn't identify Matthew Weeks at all. Um, so that, but he did later on. He changed his story later on. So I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking, why would you change your story? You know. But then again, they also the last person to see the victim alive, etc. But if that's the case, that he really was the last person to see her alive, and he rode away on his horse. That means, well, I'm going to say, he, you know, Matthew Weeks, let's say Matthew Weeks killed her. He's not going to have killed her at seven o'clock. So I say round about 7.30. Okay. Um, so if we take it 7.30, he, he slits her throat from behind, right? So he slits her throat, he watches her die. There are two cuts on, on, on the neck, which is why Patman thought, it might have been a hesitant cut to start with. Um, and then he was able to dump her body, walk back to uh, Penhale Farm, all in the space of two hours, have absolutely no blood on him whatsoever, able to walk into the farmhouse, talk to his employer as though nothing had happened, and go to bed. Um, pugwash. Yeah, and there seems to be quite a few little bits and pieces that were quite unusual. Now, I understand that uh, Charlotte was actually dismissed from her uh, employ uh, about three weeks earlier to her yes. murder, and uh, so it's questionable why was she still there three weeks after being sacked from a place, and uh, which, to my mind, sounds a bit strange. Do you know? Do you know anything about that? Um, she was apparently she was very flirty. And um, she may have won over uh, Mrs. Peter's son, John, who was a little bit um, soft, shall we say. That might have kept her there. Um, she was well known in, in the community um, a, as um, a maid. Um, and from all accounts, quite liked. But yeah. why have you... well, Mrs. Mrs. Peters was one of the people that gave up uh, that the evidence against Matthew Weeks, wasn't she? Yes. So could she, she have she, been looking, could she be uh, protecting her son? No, she was protecting her, I, I believe, because I can't say for sure, I believe she was protecting her nephew, which was Thomas Prout. Okay. Because um, um, Thomas Prout had a heated argument with Matthew Weeks, and he said that if he came to Penhale Farm, he would take Charlotte away from him. And Matthew Weeks apparently gave a, a, a retort and also said that if Thomas Pratt ever came to Penhale Farm, he, he would leave. So I don't see any jealousy on, on his part because he said, I would, I would leave. Yeah. Um, Thomas Prout at the trial 
was not questioned hard enough about his whereabouts or what went on. He just said he was due to meet her at the church. She didn't turn up. There was no cross examination um, that I, I found evidence of. He was just said his piece and got off the stand and, and was left. But um, a local, here we go into the supernatural as, aspect, yeah. a, a local um, paranormal team were up on Bob Moore and they did um, a thing calling, talking, trying to talk to uh, Charlotte Diamond. Um, I have to say I'm a bit sceptical because they stayed in the car. Okay. And this is the only reason why I'm a bit sceptical, but um, something did come through and they asked who killed her and apparently she said Tom, which would have been Thomas Prout. Yeah. But um, the growing um, accusations against Thomas Prout have been a long time coming. I mean, he didn't take... It, everyone in the community went out to look for, for her when Mrs. Peter sent out the call. He did not. Um there is evidence to suggest that maybe she wasn't killed on that Sunday because the body was still, uh, it wasn't de decomposed in any way, shape or form, according to uh, Thomas Good's autopsy report. Um, I did send that report to um, a couple of pathologists that uh, I've been in contact with, and they've said that it's a really good um report for the time and um, really concise and, and what have you um, and I think that Mrs Peters was part of Cornish Gentry um, and I believe that Weeks was, was sacrificed to save her family because it's different when you've got someone who's just an employee but when it's your family and you've got that social status and standing that you have in the community and you need to keep that social status. Um, I mean, even her um, husband or late husband was well involved in the community. And uh, Peter Richard, who I think it's Peter Richard off the top of my head, who um, was his solicitor, um, didn't really do a lot. Um, what do you think that was? Do you think that is literally because it was the, you know, the well-to-do looking after themselves? I think it's everyone looking after themselves, and I don't think anyone could get their head around the wood from the trees. You know, they all said that he, the inquest and Destica before the trial said he killed her, and that there's no way that they could change that. You were saying that uh, that Matthew Weeks. Had, it was disabled. He was, you know, physically disabled. Yeah. But he, he also had. Uh, 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 trying to think of what the what the more PC term for it is. But he was intellectually disabled as well, I believe. Yeah, he couldn't read or write. Um, Which would have been normal for those days, I would imagine, for a fire yeah. worker. Um, but apparently, Charlotte received a letter. Now, this is where it gets really interesting. On that Sunday, uh, Thomas Prout was at the farm seeing his auntie and um apparently charlotte received a letter of employment now obviously matthew weeks couldn't read this letter so he can't verify and this letter has has never ever surfaced again so obviously it was lost or destroyed or whatever but it told her that she'd got employment elsewhere and i think that was a note from actually from thomas prout that he delivered to, to meet her at the church and then whatever happened happened and weeks was was the fallout mm. to be quite honest and they'd all and there'd always been a bit of bullying of him wasn't there i said yeah. i got the feeling that he was pretty much the seen as a you know an easy target um he wasn't liked because um he had i think it was either a fifth or a tenth share in his grandparents uh farm so he did have money even okay. though he was a, a a worker he did have um a little bit of standing and he always he always would dress better than everybody else 
and apparently that caused a lot of resentment with other workers that he worked with. Uh, John Stevens absolutely hated him. Um, yeah. Okay. So, as we say, the, the court case, it was a fait accompli. Uh, he was found guilty and he was executed. Yeah, he was hanged on the 10th of uh, was it the 10th or the 12th of August, off the top of my head, uh, 1844, uh, with over 25,000 people coming to witness that. That's how huge the media output was. Um, I think there's something like 40-odd newspaper articles from the 26th of April up until the execution. Um, and they, the, the media as well sealed his fate. There, there's no coming back from that from the because the, from the first report of the 26 it then went into the times and the only place it didn't go was abroad okay. so there's i've got newspaper articles from from ireland um it it was a big thing because uh murder in cornwall the last big murder in cornwall um, had been the Lightfoot Brothers of 1840. Um, and then Sharp Diamond was... So this wasn't, it wasn't a common occurrence. As much as we'd like to think the bad old days were full of, you know, murder and such, it really wasn't. No. No. Uh, so... I, mean, I mean, there were crimes that people got away with, you know, um, but because um, where Sharp Diamond lived was so rural, um the shock as well of something like that happening in such a rural community where everybody knows everybody else um, also really went against him. OK, so there's things we know and there's things we don't know. We'll go on to the stuff we do know as far as uh, what the legacy has been. But just to, to sort of seal it off here, where, what do you think? The, what is your best guess? You, you talked about suicide before. I don't know about that. But what do you, what do you think? Um, Logically thinking, I don't think she was killed on April the 14th. Just going by um, the pathologist report um, then and now. Um, I think she, I don't think she was killed by Matthew Weeks. I think she was prob most probably killed by Thomas Prout, who probably um, tried to make a pass at her and she refused him. Or he did have his wicked way with her and then got rid of her that way um so we think thomas prout basically is the it would be your number one suspect it'd be one of, and i'll tell you something else that's really interesting david is um everyone goes on about thomas prout but after the trial there's nothing about him until you do a little bit of digging and on, on december the 8th 1845 thomas prout died of suspected drowsy Dropsy, sorry. Okay, Dro dropsy, yeah. Can you tell us what that is? Um, it's water on the lungs. Okay. Now, now here is something rather interesting is Charlotte Dumb's body was found half in and a half out of water. When Matthew Weeks' coffin was dropped into its grave, it was flooded and it floated. And then we have Thomas Pratt, whose lungs were um, apparently flooded with water. OK, so what are you trying to suggest that he got water in his lungs when he murdered her? No, um, I'm I'm just thinking it's quite. Coincidental? Ironic that, that, yeah. Well, co yeah, coincidental that that two people that he may or may not have had a hand. In. Them dying. Um, he, he. He suffers. A similar fate. So a similar fate. OK, so OK, I was just wondering if you were <laughs> there was something there because he didn't he didn't survive much longer than her then. No, um, but a year and a no, bit, a year and a bit. Yeah. So and so we can't find out whether he, he, he confessed on his deathbed or anything like that. No. And even if he did, because he died with his brother at his side. Yeah. Because um, he signed that he was there for the death certificate and it says suspected dropsy rather than dropsy yeah. Yeah. And, and one does wonder whether maybe conscious may have come into it because the times 
published on the 8th of August a confession that was due to come out after Weeks was was um, hanged. And in this confession, the finger firmly points at Thomas Prout being the reason that Weeks allegedly killed Charlotte Diamond. So regardless of who killed her, he he, he is to blame. If Weeks did kill her, he's to blame. If he killed her, he's to blame. So he had to live in a rural community where everyone knows everyone and talks about everyone knowing that people are pointing the finger at him. Were they pointing the finger at him as well? This Thomas Prowse fellow? Well, they were pointing the finger in as much as you're the reason she's dead. Yeah. Whether Weeks killed her or not, because because of what the Times wrote, and and then it came out afterwards in other newspapers that he was the reason that she she was killed, that, yeah, people would have looked at him as if to say, well, what were you doing? You shouldn't have been doing that. You knew she had a boyfriend. What's wrong with you? You know? Yeah. Well, what was the legacy with it? Like some of these players that we've spoken about, like, do we know anything about what happened in the rest of their lives? Like the uh, Peters and people like that, the surviving um, people? Mrs. Peters sold up her farm and moved to Liscard with her son. Um, Charlotte Diamond's mother died in 1864 and I okay. think buried in, I think it's Callington, but don't quote me on that because I'd have to look that up. Um, the, um, the rest of them just faded into obscurity. Um, although there's a misconception that the monument on Bodmin Moor was erected before the trial, it was actually erected in on the 15th of June, 15th of June, 1845. Can you tell us a little bit about that? I mean, uh, yes, there is a, a memorial there, and I know, but I believe there's a, a newer memorial where you were at the unveiling. But can you tell us about the original, the original uh, memorial? Uh, the original memorial w- was done because um, the out the shock and the outcry of such a crime happening where it did was. Um, they they raised funds to build a monument to prosperity to say this is what's happened here, and originally it's it was on the site where she was found, but round about eighteen seventy three or four, um, with the with the water and stuff, eroded the, where it was and it fell down, and then a vicar came along to Davistow and he had the monument rebuilt. I'm not too sure why he had the monument rebuilt, bearing in mind that at that point she was still buried in an unmarked grave. Um, And then a part of the church was renovated and a little cross that had fallen off was put um, on where her grave was. And then later on, a local farmer donated um, a stone step slab with her name, uh, Charlotte Diamond, 1826 to 1844 on it then a few years ago um and a a new little headstone what was um commissioned and i was there i I was asked to go to the unveiling because obviously i've written about her and what have you um which which was really moving um and i met her great 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 distant cousin and what have you and interestingly, talking to them, um, they believed that her mother's husband, who was her possibly her stepdad stroke dad, actually killed her for her mother smacking his daughter years earlier. OK, so I mean, that's an interesting, obviously, a family legend that might have something to do with something to do um, with it. Um, but. You, know, you, can't, you can never tell, but it's an interesting can, little aspect to the to the story. Yeah, you know, I mean, and the first recorded what I have found to be the first recorded ghost, if you like, is from 1932 in in an obscure magazine that just said that there's meant to be the ghost of a woman on the moor. It doesn't give her a name, okay, or anything. 
So how, do, so how do we know that it's supposedly Charlotte? Has it been since? Tell, uh, what kind there, of activity has there been seen? There was an author called W. H. Painter who was a local historian who would go around gathering up all local stories and what have you. And he first wrote about it in the 1940s, um, painting Charlotte in this lovely light and Weeks in this he's a big bad monster light. Um, and and he would go around giving lectures on that case. And the legacy has really built up from there. Um, there was another author called John, I think it's called John Turner off the top of my head, who was in love with the ghost of Charlotte Diamond, so much so that when he died, he had his ashes scattered over where, where her body or where the okay. monument um, is. Um, and then Pat Munn wrote the definitive case of uh, Charlotte Diamond. And then there's just numerous, numerous articles. And they all just basically reiterate this, the same old, same old, without looking deeper into the case. Yeah, I've, I've found that. I've got, I've got a number of uh, sort of Cornish paranormal books, and some of them have got the story in it. But I think out of, like, say, six of the ones I have, there's only one that actually throws any kind of shade on the, the likelihood that it wasn't Matthew Weeks. It's all pretty much straightforward. This bloke murdered her, and now she wanders the moors or something like that. So, But, of course, they're not true crime books. They're paranormal ones. So, no. so They're used to be... Hold on. If I just go over here a sec. It's really interesting. Is it here? Bear with me. So much rubbish here. <laughs> Well, you were showing me before you've got a huge amount of uh, research on it. We can't really see it. We can't really see it because you've got you've got your blur on your camera there. So, yeah, sorry. so. Well, it's this used to be in Davidson Church, and it's called the Sad Tale of Charlotte Diamond, and it ends with, uh, "We can only hope that when the trap door on the scaffold flew open and poor poor Matthew plunged to almost certain death at the end of the rope." His spirit soared like the buzzards above Rautel, uh, eventually to be uh, reunited with the spirit of Charlotte Diamond. Okay, well, that's seen as a romantic sort of notion. Um, nobody can tell me what, where that came from. Um, but the interesting thing is that was in Dave, they had a little display in Davidson Church and that was like the centrepiece. And the whole point was that they were saying that he was reunited with Charlotte Diamond, and my logic would be that if he murdered her, they wouldn't want him to go and visit her. That's right. Yeah, be, They'd yeah. want him to go to another elsewhere. place. Where? Yeah. So well, the, that's that, that's interesting. So there obviously you did have some kind of supporters out there. It wasn't completely, uh, you know, the world against him. No, I no. mean to be fair, when I when when I came 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 to this, I came to it with a completely open mind that yes, he may have done it. Or he may not have done it. Let's just take everything on board. Um, and then the research just took off from there. You know, cross-referencing newspaper articles. Um, at the end of Pat Munn's book, she gives you like a list of all the people involved in the case, um, which is very good. And it was a very good starting point for me. But then it, it came really hard when you realised that uh, Charlotte Diamond herself was um, a third generation base child. Which means illegitimate. Yeah. Yeah. You know. So there's a lot of a lot of uh, issues of class here, I think, about, you know, people protecting themselves and, yeah. uh, you know, and it has lots and lots of different angles to it. And I can understand why you've wanted to research this over the years, because it is a quite an in-depth story and it doesn't seem like it's black and white at all. No, definitely not black and white. Now we just we 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 uh, we've uh, touched on the paranormal aspect a couple of times. We yeah, uh, you said there'd been some paranormal investigators who'd uh, talked to them while they were sitting in their car on the on the moor, which I, I don't really blame them because I don't I'd want to go out into the <laughs> into the moor because uh, uh, the closest I got there was when I stayed at the Jamaica Inn and it was a dreadful dreadful night. Not was wonderful, but it was the weather was dreadful. What about? Uh, I believe uh, the ghost of Matthew Weeks has been uh, witnessed in places. Um, he he was witnessed or, or said to have haunted Bodmin Jail. 
um, which obviously has now had this huge refurbishment. Yeah. Um, but where I believe the coal shuttles are, I believe that his body is still buried under there because as far as I'm aware, his he was his coffin was not covered in lime. He okay. was just dumped or put down there. Okay. Um, in the jail itself now, one of the uh, displays is the death faces of six inmates, but nobody can tell me or is sure if any of them are Matthew Weeks. But apparently, all all people that were hanged at the time down here apparently uh, yeah. all had death masks made okay because there's no picture of matthew weeks is there no no one knows what he looked i mean I suppose they have pock marks but that's i think all they know about him um the lightfoot brothers of 1840 um had a newspaper sketch of them and then there was another murder in penzance in 1845 um and that murderer ha- had a newspaper illustration um there is no illustration anywhere of what matthew weeks looked like there is no despite all the leaflets and and stuff that came out at at the time and, and especially for like for the day of the hanging no um image at all of sh- or description even of shark diamond I mean, even the pathologist report does not give you a description of of, of what she looked like. Okay. So it's, what do you think that was? Because you notice all these other, you know, historic crimes, they have pictures of everyone and they do, you know, pictures of the hanging and all the peoples around them and all sorts of things. Um, I, I don't want, I think it was a, a collective not wanting anything to be saved for prosperity. Because, like, the, if you've got... Uh, Twenty or five thousand or people down to view the hanging, and you've got all these leaflets. There were songs written about it at the time. Um, there was a gentleman that was on uh, Lucy Worsley's um, a very British murder program, who talked about songs and and what have you. I wrote to him, and he said he's never come across anything about Charlotte Diamond. Um, the British Museum don't have anything. The British Library don't have anything. So all all the paperwork, all all the leaflets and what have you came out at the time, um, have, have, have disappeared. It is the strangest thing I think I've ever come across that something so huge has simply got no trail at all left. I wonder, I wonder why that is. I mean, it just, it seems every little part of this is more intriguing than the next. It is an absolute, that is, I think, part and parcel of, of why it's such a mystery. Now, as I said, um, I recently went, um, my wife took me as a treat uh, to to the renovated uh, Bobman Jail. And they've got all the, and it's fa- fantastic. If you like that sort of thing, it, it's fantastic. Um, it's got all these like film scenarios and what have you. Um, and they have pirate ships in there and the Beast of Bob Moor. And all they have to do with Shark Diamond is when you go into the Morbit, is a stat, a miniature of the monument. There's no filmed footage. That there's nothing. In fact, I asked. One one of the um, people that that took you around, I said, "Where where is your, the Charlotte Diamond stuff?" And they said, um, "We don't know who's Charlotte Diamond." Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I think you're doing your best to make sure that people know who she is, and uh, and hopefully people watching this video who didn't know about it before. Uh, will uh, maybe do some more of their own research. Now, thank you for that, Matthew. Now, we're going to get you back uh, soon. Sorry, are you going to say something about... No, no. Or... No, it's just your look at me and saying, what? <laughs> uh, you, uh, there's an article on Spooky Isles, which I'll link to uh, uh, down below uh, that you've written, uh, which goes into uh, a lot of the detail that you've spoken about today. And uh, and that'll be a good start for people who are interested in uh, the murder of uh, Charlotte Diamond and uh, maybe the injustice uh, against Matthew Weeks. But you've got a book coming out, which is totally 
not the subject of what we've talked about today. It's uh, more about horror films. And we're going to get you back to talk about that. But can you maybe give us a little a little taster of what that's all going to be about and when that's coming out? Um, it's just done its fourth pass and gone to the publisher now. It's called uh, Where Does Imagination End and Reality Begin? Re-examining the horror film. Um, it features nine pieces, some which have been published before. But what you get with the book is you get what I call director's cuts and extended cuts. I cover um, Dracula's Daughter. Um, I Married a Witch, which I know viewers will go, hold on, that's not a horror film. That's a comedy. But I argue in my piece that at its heart, it is a horror film. Um, there's Frankenstein meets the Wolfman. Oh, and many, many others. Well, they're all certain sound like great films. So we'll look forward to getting you back and maybe having a ch uh, chat about maybe one or two of those songs because they're, they're uh, very much favourites of mine. So thank you, Matthew. You have a great night. And, thank you, David. Uh, we'll talk you to you too. next time. All awesome. right. And that's, thank you. See you later. Bye-bye. See you later. Bye-bye.